everybody. If you have stuck with me to this point, I really appreciate it. This is going to be the first time I reviewed such a large figure, so maybe a little bit trial and error here. Hopefully the view of him is good. I'll try to get some decent lighting on him here too. Still working on all that, but hey, Secret Santa is finished for the year. If you did watch all the previous videos, you know that this is a monstrosity, mashed up, Frankenstein, MacGyver monstrosity. Don't ask me to say that again. I don't think I can. <laughs> of many parts, uh, I was really just spinning my wheels this year on what I was going to do. Um, I think this is the longest it took me to kind of pull the trigger on an actual decision. And with obviously once again having one last month this year, got a little bit stressful. And when I got deep into this thing, I had no idea if this was actually going to come together or actually going to happen. But here we are. Um, I stayed up till 2 in the morning on Halloween, well, I guess technically into November 1st, <laughs> just to ensure that he was done by the deadline. Uh, and we are here actually on the 12th of November, and I actually still don't have an address, but. That doesn't matter to me. Like I said, I always try to finish on time. A little bit stressed this year to get this one done. However, once again, like I said, he is. So I am quite happy with him due to the weight. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he weighs one pound and six ounces. So it actually ended up being a little bit lighter than I thought he would be actually lifting him and hanging on to him and whatnot. Um, but the main reason for that is due to the amount of sculpt on there. I probably went through whew, maybe a third of my epoxy, which has actually worked out as pretty beneficial because it's getting old. So as it's getting old, you want to use it up, right? <laughs> so everything pretty much got sculpted on him except for the hands that I had to fill in, obviously the little gaps that were there. Um, and then sculpted over the feet and then the loincloth, which was added from the Wendigo Build-A-Figure, I believe. Uh, other than that, everything was completely covered in epoxy, as you saw, textured, sculpted, and painted. Um, definitely proud of how everything turned out. Hopefully, you all will be able to see the texture that kind of turned out in him. Um, using that new sponge technique with the heating up the sculpt and then using the sponge actually worked really well to add texture kind of at the last minute. So as you saw before, I actually added the joints to the hands, the swivel joints, and then the bend as well from the alien figure that it came from. Just a very, very basic figure, but I knew I would use it someday for something and here we are. So <laughs> made those joints um, and then obviously altered these ones a little bit, added the butterfly joints. I do have to figure out a way to kind of tighten these up because they actually ended up pretty loose, especially with the weight of those arms. As you can see, they don't like to stay where you put them. You bastard. They stayed where I put them. Trust me, when you start moving them around, it's a little loose. However, I do think I will be able to tighten that up with a little bit of floor wax though. So um, the upper torso doesn't really like to stay where you put it as well. It's kind of on that that swivel joint as well. Um, but just from the overall look and feel of the character, I don't think my recipient will mind. He stands pretty well, but when gravity does take its toll, this thing's going down, so they may want to strategically put something behind him that, you know, kind of keeps him up, so to speak. But as you can see right now, he kind of stands freely if you position him just right. Um, Hopefully nobody's having epic battles with this guy or anything, but I think he would withstand it. There's a lot of epoxy on this thing. You could probably break a window with him and he'd be just fine. Um, as you all saw, the head was completely custom sculpted. So from scratch, I basically just took a normal MCU head. Um, I can't think of the actor's name, the guy who played Gollum. Um, anyway, that actually fit the Build-A-Figure piece. So I put that on there, threw some epoxy over it, and then obviously sculpted according to um, what I thought he should look like from the very minimal pictures I had of the actual character. Uh, big shout out to my helper group. I was ready to kind of scrap the face after I was, had sculpted it. I didn't think it was looking good. They all told me and convinced me it was looking great. So I went with it and I trusted the other artist's opinion. And then when I finally added the rest of the detail, the horns, the antlers, tusks, the hair, 
I was very happy with it. So definitely, I appreciate it, y'all. Thank you for um, talking me off the ledge there. Uh, moving on, though, once again, as you saw, I casted um, the upper piece from a Venom figure to actually fit the legs of the Wendigo Build-A-Figure and then basically glued on the spider, or the SPDR, and some random numbers. I, I don't know exactly what that was called. <laughs> um, legs to that. Kept the knee joints with those. Kept the um, calves as well. And then basically altered them to where the alien feet actually fit on. And then sculpted over those to make it all fit. And so the very last touch that I added is we had that kind of really bad joint right there. Was to actually put... Um, I used green stuff dyed black, and as you can see, it's it's movable. So the foot actually moves and pretty much hides that joint there on both sides, uh, which was ultimately my goal. I didn't know if it was going to work. It's one of the last things I did. I am very grateful that it did. So as I am moving him here, you may be witness to what I was talking about with him liking to fall down. Of course, it's proven me wrong a couple times here now, though, so... Um, view from the back, we'll just go ahead and give him a turn here, just kind of take an overall look. I did use some wire um, to basically sculpt the rib cage and then add the epoxy to that, which that rigidness of the wire actually made really good kind of a rib cage for him as well, which I was very happy with. Um, see if these prove me wrong again, yep, they're staying, but trust me, they don't like to. <laughs> so. Once again, quite happy with it. What I'm going to attempt to do now is just take some few close-up shots. Um, with all that work, a pretty simple, straightforward, basic review of this figure. Um, really hoping the recipient likes it. Um, not sure who I got, obviously. Not ready to ship yet at this point, but I also haven't taken my final pictures either, so... Um, it all kind of works out. So when I have time to do so, I'll get those final videos, get this guy in the mail, and hopefully he's not going overseas because that weight will uh, <laughs> be rather expensive to ship, but always well worth it. It's all part of it. We all know what's expected, having a lot of international participants. So um, one last thing I wanted to do just to show some scale, I actually have a Masters of the Universe figure here, so I'll kind of basically place him <laughs> with the Haramesh. Um, to give you an idea about where, how he stands. So he stands, I believe, I measured at about nine inches tall. So judging by the picture, not knowing much about it, um, I think he's pretty accurate scale to um, how he appeared in the comic, I believe. Um, so there you have it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Get some final views on him here and uh, be eagerly awaiting next year's project. Take care.